Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Newman on. I'll be making a video for you guys over Battlefield 3 today. I'll be playing Operation Metro on Conquest and I'll be playing with the crew, you know, Nerd Mode Off, myself, Nike Runner, and 87. You know, pretty common guys. We all have the same ideal of how the game should be played. We all use the same kits and just the main gist of it is I actually enjoy playing with these guys. They're kind of familiar faces and to be honest, I would not see myself playing with a large number of different, you know, players mixing in. But, you know, it's just kind of how it, you know, works i guess it's just how i uh, function i like to play with people that are strong and i definitely like the communication factor that does occur when we play so that's the main gist of that guys i'm gonna pursue onward into the more important topics at hand and i think you guys will enjoy if you guys are a battlefield player this is going to be some exciting news for you guys Battlefield 4, the 17-minute trailer, has actually just been released today, and this is something that I think we've all been waiting for. Obviously, it's campaign footage, so, you know, it's on PC, so the ultra-setting graphics are there, and a lot of the implementation of the campaign is there. Now, granted, we won't see any multiplayer footage for quite some time. I mean, it's kind of like a strip tease, you know. They're giving you a kind of what you want, but they're not giving you the whole factor. We all know what Battlefield 3 campaign looked like compared to what the multiplayer looked like. And a lot of the PC guys will say, well, it still looks awesome. Well, yes, it does look awesome, I will not lie. Even for the Xbox and the PS3, you know, it's pretty significant. It is probably the best looking game that we've probably seen on all three platforms in a number of years. And, you know, some people will say Call of Duty, but let's be honest, Call of Duty doesn't really have graphics. It's just the gameplay that everyone's more interested in. It's the 60 frames per second, the consistency within every title. I mean, Call of Duty doesn't really look that great. It just, you know, it's kind of rehashed and it's just used over and over again. So we're made to think that the graphics are phenomenal. But anyway, I'm not really here to bash Call of Duty. I mean, that's not what I was trying to get at. I'm sure somebody will take that out of context and completely ruin the concept of that, but I was given the idea that, you know, Battlefield definitely does strive for the graphical imagery, but unfortunately the campaign does not show exactly what we'll see in multiplayer, but I imagine it's going to be on the toppest scale. I mean, we're going to be seeing a lot of improvements in this installment, but anyway guys, to jump into the main gist of it or what I'm really trying to get at. Since the 17 minute trailer was released, I picked up a couple of cool little things. I'm sure you guys were definitely looking around just as hard as I was. And I'm seeing a lot of the returning factors, you know, the Russians seem to be our enemy, at least in the campaign. I saw the little buggy that had the mountain, I want to call it the PKP Peshen egg on top. I could be wrong though, it could be a different variant, but more nor less, it is a Russian weapon on top mountain. Obviously we saw that in Battlefield 3, nothing of an improvement there. We also got to see some of the civilian vehicles that will drive, so that's pretty standard. We also had that and the co-op version of Battlefield 3 followed by, I think if I'm correct, also on the single player. But don't hold me exactly to that because that has been a significant amount of time since I've played campaign for the Battlefield 3 side of it. You know, a couple of other things. I do like the HUD. I don't know if you guys took note of that. In the bottom right, everything seems to be a lot more organized, like the ammo count just the amount of grenades, all that stuff. I mean, in previous Battlefields, we've all seen the clusterfuck of just trying to mash everything in there and kind of just, you know, put it all in there so it's for our advantage. But I was really impressed by this. I really was. I was actually like, okay, I know how much, you know, grenades I have, how much ammunition I have total. And the top right, if you guys took note, it also has your PC stuff, so how many friends you have online, how many achievements you have unlocked. There was a flag. I don't know what that means. I imagine, like, the flag, some kind of error or something. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm not a PC guy. That stuff doesn't exist on console, but you guys get the main gist of it. The mini-map. This was really cool, and I hope this transfers to console. I mean, granted, I won't be playing Battlefield 4 on console. As you guys know, I do have a PC that can play Battlefield 3 at ridiculous frames rates. I have no problem in playing it. I just choose not to play it. I'm kind of lazy. I use my PC for only making videos, and... I guess it's kind of lazy, I guess you could say. I mean, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of spending thousands of dollars on your PC, but, you know, I'm just gearing up for it. I told you guys at the very beginning, if you guys are new to my channel, you know, I'm gearing up for DayZ. DayZ is the one game that I'm looking forward to out of probably anything that's going to be released. Because it just seems like something that would be fun. It would be something like I could implement you guys into. Granted, I can implement you guys into anything I do. You know, Call of Duty videos, Battlefield, Halo, whatever. But DayZ also has a larger number. I mean, it's humongous. The landscape, the ability for all kind of, you know, actions is far superior to any other title that I'm currently aware of. But anyway, that's the main gist of that. You guys know what my PC is for. I've told this story more than enough times, I guess, to basically place that into context. But the, you know, actual minimap was very impressive. I do like the scanning ability, like it shows which way you're facing, which I guess that really wasn't a big deal once you got used to Battlefield 3, but... I think this is a lot more of an improvement. It also showed like 
differences and your like arrows you know if you had blue arrows it showed your teammates stuff like that that's pretty standard for the battlefield 3 side and other titles but i don't know if you guys took note but when the unit on the okay when he's looking through the floor there was that blown out hole and it's almost in the beginning when they're going to the safe house when that russian guy walks through it actually shows him on the mini map you know right when he sees him right when the opening in the floor is there so that's something to take note of now how does that differ i mean how does that really add anything to it um that's for you guys to decide i didn't see any difference in color in that department but i imagine that they'll probably implement that in if they're going to do it because i know a lot of people had really really big problems with close quarters when it released when you didn't know which you know level the combat was you know occurring on that was something that a lot of the pro players for Battlefield 3, if you guys are familiar with, like Rival X Factor, Matimio, any of those guys, they talked about that, they gave their complaints, and they like tried to make it something that would be implemented into future titles, but we'll see. I mean, I look forward to it. But as for anything else that I really took note of, there was obviously the grenade launcher. The M16 was pretty sick. You also had two scopes. I don't know if you guys took complete note of it, but you guys can actually tip the weapon on its side to use the iron sights and you can also have the I want to say times four or maybe 3.4 optical scope that's something to take note of if the recoil is actually that low that'll be something that I really look forward to because the whole problem with using those scopes in Battlefield 3 is that they added so much recoil it was completely a waste of your time because it didn't really add any like effectiveness I mean granted you could like zoom forward you could check out the perimeter do all that kind of stuff but when you got into combat of where the assault rifles really are powerful at medium to long range they were kind of useless it was kind of like okay now I gotta compensate for this ridiculous amount of recoil added to my weapon and it just didn't seem like much of a benefit you guys also probably took note of the ability of the foregrip that's something that's gonna be returning I'm sure a lot of you guys saw that as I've told you before the optics but the one thing that I was really impressed with is that if you guys have to pay a lot of attention I mean if you guys are unfamiliar you guys might want to go watch the thing a couple of times I mean I took notes obviously a little bit but there's a lot that I will miss throughout this commentary but the tracers and battlefield 3 were red you know they were red tracers blah you know stuff like that but these ones are actually lime green and that's really cool because it was sometimes really difficult to see where your shots were dropping off too short they were going too long whatever but I feel like with the lime green feel I feel like everything's going to be a little bit more easy to, you know, track where the bullets are going if they're, you know, too far off, if you're going to suppress the effect and all that stuff. Now, granted, I didn't take any note of the suppression, so maybe I might have to go back through a couple of times because I know he was getting suppressed. I don't know if he was a PC elitist because I saw him spraying from the hip quite a bit and, you know, maybe he coughed and, like, whipped his mouth mouse completely off to the side, but I'm sure you guys probably saw that if you guys are, you know, really MLG PC guys. You guys were probably like, God, this guy, does he even know how to play PC? I mean, he almost acted like he was me with no, about as much intelligence or the ability to play the PC side as, you know, a beginner. But I'm not hating the guy. I'm just saying that was something to take note of, I guess you could say. I mean, there was a lot of things that were implemented. The knife, from what I saw, was not any different than what we currently have now, which I was kind of like, okay, I mean, you guys didn't really add any new animation, at least on that one. I'm hoping that there's new animations. I mean, I have no problem with the current ones. I think they're phenomenal. I think they redefine the experience of knifing players. But, you know, I would like to see some new animations. Maybe, like, break the guy's ankle and then stab him in the throat. I don't know. Something a little bit more impressive. But that's just the campaign. I cannot speak for what else is currently going to be going on. You guys saw that the Havoc is returning. And that's something cool, along with the transport helicopter for the U.S. And there is also a female character. We'll see if that implements into the online side of it. I highly doubt it. Just because of, you know, probably they're a little scared to put that into action. But anyway, guys, that has been my review of the Battlefield 4 side of it. I will also be releasing more information as it comes available. So this is NMO, signing off. Peace.